Hi and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to take a look at Sparkplug. Now before I continue the contents of this video are also covered in uh, two tutorials on the site and there's the link if you want to go and read the tutorials. I do recommend that not, you not only follow uh, on the video you actually do go and read the tutorials as well. So why Sparkplug? Well there's a couple of perceived shortcomings in the MQTT protocol and they're actually shortcomings and also advantages and the protocol doesn't actually specify the topic namespace uh, so there's no structure for the topic which uh, is very incredibly flexible and has made MQTT very popular. There's limited state management um, basically you know when the um, sensor or the device has gone down uh, you don't actually know when it's online with the current uh, protocol and also there's no defined payload structure. Now they have perceived limitations or shortcomings but they also work to the advantage of making MQTT uh, very flexible. So the idea of Sparkplug is to uh, fix these perceived shortcomings. So Sparkplug, Sparkplug provides a topic namespace structure and this is the structure what we've got here. It provides a mechanism for state management. Um, it uses birth messages and it also uses death messages, last will and testament message messages. Now these ones, the last will is provided by the MQT protocol. The only new bit of this is the birth message. So it defines also a payload structure. And the payload structure is defined using Google protocol buffers. Now this is the bit of spark plug that I'm not too keen on. I find Google protocol buffers uh, complex, and uh, not easy to implement. And you certainly have a problem with them when it comes to using the standard MQTT tools, which I'll look at at the end of the, the video. But that's the way it is defined using Google protocol buffers. Why they didn't have an option there for JSON as well as Google protocol, protocol buffers, I don't know. They could have easily done that by um, using a different namespace. So Sparkplug provides a topic structure, a mechanism for state management and a payload structure. Uh, it doesn't change the MQTT protocol one bit so it makes no changes to MQTT at all. Now this is a little schematic that shows you where Sparkplug fits into this or it meant to show you where it fits into this. We have TCP IP, MQTT sitting on top and Sparkplug sits on top of MQTT. Obviously Sparkplug's an option, you don't have to use Sparkplug. You can just use MQTT and you can use your own topic structure, you can use your own payload structure and you can implement your own state management. When we talked about Sparkplug, we're going to talk about it reference to this uh, reference diagram. This is actually taken from the specification and everything revolves the, around the MQT broker and this is an MQTT uh, 3.11 broker and it doesn't have to be special so all MQTT 3.1 brokers um, will support Sparkplug. They don't have, all they have to support is uh, retain messages and last will and testament, which they, they all do, it's part of the MQTT specification. So when it says it's Sparkplug compliant, uh, almost all the brokers would be Sparkplug compliant unless they're very, very old brokers. Um, we have a primary application here, which is basically your control. This is going to control all your devices, uh, it's going to receive data from your devices and uh, display them and we can have other applications receiving data from the from the broker over here. Now we have what we call uh, edge of node, edge of network nodes and these will have devices attached to them. Now in, in old implementations these probably would be pole devices so this would be a polling mechanism pulling in data from these devices into the uh, edge of network node and these nodes would be Sparkplug compliant and they would be sending the data via MQTT to the primary application. And we also can have edge of network nodes that are, uh, understand MQTT so they're basically an edge of network node and a device all in one so it's basically a device that uh, has MQTT built into it which will be the, the newer type devices. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, all the broker needs to support is retain messages and last will and testament. 
so let's have a look at the topic namespace now this is the structure of it is we have the namespace and there's only two options there which is basically uh, spark plug A and spark plug B um, as I mentioned earlier um, you could easily uh, implement um, JSON with this by just adding a different namespace in here uh, we have a group ID which you choose yourself uh, we have a message type and the, the message types are defined and we we'll look at those in a second uh, we add a edge node ID and we have a device ID so that is the structure there it make more sense when we actually look at a, an example in, in a minute uh, the namespaces we've got spark plug one uh, sorry spark plug a and spark plug B uh, the, the group ID you can divide devices into groups for management and I say we'll look at that with the namespace it makes more sense when we do that and these are the message types so we've got a birth message death message these are node birth and death then we got device birth and death then we got node and device data and then we got com node commands and data commands and we've got state so these are all the message types so the edge of network node has to be unique the idea has to be unique has to define the um, edge of network node uh, uniquely and the device ID needs to be unique on the EON node and this is an example um, topic plan we're going to look at a steel factory with some rolling mills and we're just going to divide the groups into plant 1, plant 2, plant 3 so we have the namespace, the grouping, plant one. We have the message type, which we saw earlier, birth, death, etc. And then we have the edge of network node ID. We can call it Rodin Mill one. And we're going to have device one attached to this and device two attached to this. And then we can have another edge of network node Rodin Mill two with device one, device two. Uh, quite straightforward. I like the the topic structure. As we mentioned earlier, uh, the Sparkle payload uses Google Protocol buffers. Um, it's another way of representing complex data, similar to JSON, but it's, it's actually more complex than, than JSON, not as easy to read. In fact, it illustrates that if you read the specification, the examples are actually structured in JSON, they're not uh, structured in Google Protocol buffers. So the payload consists of a series of metrics, uh, and the metrics, the metric, each metric has a name, an alias, a timestamp, a date of type, and a value. Now, the alias can be used in, in place of the name, so this is basically just to make it, uh, the messages smaller. So once you've established the name, you can start using the alias. But obviously, the the first message must include the name, and the alias and after that you can include the sorry and after that you can use the alias instead of the name so let's have a look how they communicate now if you remember back to the the earlier diagram we got the primary application we got the edge of network nodes and we got the device nodes so how do they exchange messages so if we start with the primary application basically the control panel uh, when it comes online, it publishes a last will and, te last will and testament message, and it, it publishes a birth message. And the topic it uses state, and then it uses the SCADA host ID, which is the ID of the of the application. An interesting thing here is actually uses it publishes the payload as a plain UTF-8 string. It doesn't use Google protocol buffers for this. Uh, the last will is sent as part of standard MQTT connection and again the payload is plain text and it says offline so when this application goes offline then the last will is published and it will publish the text offline and it uses the retain flag remember we said the the broker sorry the broker needs to support retain messages and this is just an example, a screenshot taken of a published message. And you can see here we've got the retain flag set. And we can see here we're publishing on the topic state. This is the ID. And the message is online. Online. This is the birth message.
No, you don't actually see the last will message because that that last will message is actually contained in the connection packet. So it's not you don't actually see it if you're monitoring the broker. It's part of the the connection packet. Okay, so what happens with the edge of network node? So when that goes online, it connects to the MQT broker and sets the last will and testament message, the which is the node end death, the node death. It subscribes to the state topic, so you can actually see messages from the primary application. It, sub it subscribes to the node command and the device command topics. Um, this is so you can actually receive messages addressed to it, the actual network nodes and the actual devices themselves. And here you can see it here. This is what it's subscribing to. End command. This is your edge of network node name and a wildcard and the same with the devices. Now it also publishes a birth message, an end birth message and you can see it here on this topic here, end birth on whatever the node name is, the edge of network node name. And the payload for these messages and all the subsequent payloads are all using Google Protocol Buffers format. So the only ones that actually use a plain text is the state. Now, as part of the will message, the only metric it's published is this actual sequence number, and that sequence number starts at zero, and it's incremented by one uh, on every connection. And it resets, I think they reset on, on when it gets to 255, it resets back to zero. And the birth message is also includes the same sequence number as that one, so they, they match, so you can match the two together. Now this is actually very interesting. The end birth message includes all the edge of known metrics. So it basically publishes, it can actually be very, very large, it publishes all the metrics or that it's ever going to publish. So obviously you can add to it later on, in which case you, you'd have to issue another birth message. So all the devices attached to it, the metrics from those devices, what the metrics what those devices will be publishing, the metrics that the edge of network node itself is going to be publishing, all of that is included in the birth message. Now in addition, the end birth message contains metrics that make public the commands that this node will accept. And you can see that clear clearly on the screenshot below. You can see here are the metrics. Remember we said that the, the name, the alias, the timestamp, the data type and the value. Now it's basically saying this is the command it's going to accept. It's going to con accept the next server command. And this is if you've actually got multiple brokers you can switch to another broker and it's also going to have a rebirth command so the primary application can send the command to that that node and tell it to publish another birth message and uh, notice though these are actually this is in json format the, these messages these metrics and you'll see that in the specification they they show them in in json format so as i mentioned earlier if you're using the mosquito pub uh, spelling mistake there I've just noticed uh, uh, if you're using the mosquito pub and, and sub tools uh, with the, the eye in it <laughs> uh, they don't display the messages properly and you can see that on this screenshot below and uh, you can see it here um, it's a bit gibberish it's a bit gibberish because it's protocol buffers and the publish and subscribe tools currently whether they will actually be changed so they do I don't know they don't uh, they can't decode the message uh, I have created a Python tool um, it's a, an extension of a monitor I created a long time ago um, and I've just upgraded that and it will decode the um, Google protocol buffers. It's available for download on the site and if you go to that link I showed you earlier and I'll put it in the description below um, you can download it. it. It basically decodes the protocol buffers and displays them so you can actually read the messages 
uh, useful if you're debugging it. I will also be showing you in another video uh, um, the Node-RED tool and you can actually look at the, the messages in using Node-RED. Okay, so there's the link to the tutorial on the site. Next time we're going to actually look at the messages in, in more detail. Uh, we're going to look at actual captured messages. Now, there is a simulator here and I haven't used the simulator. Um, I did try to use it. Um, didn't make sense of it. Um, I don't know why. But anyway, the, it is publishing on testmosquito.org. So if you actually go there and subscribe to this topic here, you should see lots of data, um, people publishing uh, spark plug messages and actual messages produced by this simulator here. Uh, I can't remember what the group ID is off the top of my head, but it is actually identifiable. So if you want to play around with Sparkplug, then I suggest you go and have a look at that. Subscribe to Sparkplug version 1.0 wildcard on this broker here, and you'll see all the Sparkplug messages that have been produced. And I'll be showing you that in a, some screenshots later, and we'll be going through it uh, in, a, in a later video. So that's it. Um, if you've got any comments, then leave them below. If you like the video, then click on the like button. And if you want to get notified of new videos on the channel, then subscribe and click on the notification bell. Okay, until next time, goodbye.